When it comes to writing crime fiction, there are few who have written as many volumes as Linda Fairstein. She writes what she knows, being a former prosecutor herself, and the crimes just keep on coming, as Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes discovered. Wow. <laughs> Clearly you like to work or maybe need to work in a mess here. Look at this. Did you call it a mess? I did. I called it a total mess. Something said endearingly to my friend, Linda Fairstein, who's into her second act in life as a best-selling author of crime fiction. You know, you wanted to be a, a, a mystery writer, and you are a mystery writer. Who gets to actually have an ambition when they're 10 years old and actually get to live it out? It's uh, just don't give up your dreams, even when people tell you you can't. Uh, if you hang on to it and find a way to come back to it, it's a great joy. She did come back to writing, but after a long detour, she joined the Manhattan District Attorney's Office right out of law school in 1972. You were the sex crime prosecutor in New York City for 30 years. Yes. You saw the most gruesome crimes. Nuns raped, yes. little kids who were tortured. It's nothing I set out to do. And I really, terrible word when I say I fell in love with the work. I loved the ability to do something to try and get justice for women who, because of American law, had never been allowed near the courtroom. So it was very richly rewarding most days. And it was very, very dark other days. Tough in the field and in the courtroom. Fairstein was called hell on heels as she took on the whole system that made it nearly impossible to prosecute someone for rape. When I got to the office in 1972, the law was still so archaic that women reporting rape could not testify unless there were three elements of the crime proved by someone else. Someone had to either see the attacker going to the crime scene, witness the crime, um, Who witnesses a rape? And no, then... Almost nobody. So th there had to be proof of the forcible nature of the attacks. She was a leader in the drive to change this law and others like it. She also pioneered the use of DNA, becoming one of the first prosecutors in the country to introduce it in court. How much of an impact did DNA make on your whole area of sex crimes? Revolutionized, revolutionized the criminal justice system, and certainly for sexual assault. Um, if you'd ever told me that science could do better than the best detectives I'd ever worked with, I wouldn't have believed you. But science did do better. This is the left side of his face. There's one deep, severe scratch mark, and there's another long mark here. With the help of DNA, she prosecuted and supervised high-profile cases, like Robert Chambers, the so-called preppy murderer, and the controversial case of the Central Park jogger. Soon, publishers came calling, asking her to write a book about sexual violence. She even became the inspiration for many tough prosecutors on TV, like this one. There were also lacerations to the upper and lower extremities. Objection. Various foreign bodies lodged in her ears, a fractured left femur. Objection. Contusions and abrasions to the forehead, chin, hands, and knees. That's enough, Miss Cabot. In the mid-1990s, Linda Fairstein decided to go back to her original dream. She asked the DA's office for permission to write crime fiction. And they said, as long as you do it on your own time, uh, do it. And the guy kind of brushed me off. He said, lady, everybody thinks they can write a book. <laughs> so. But this lady did. She created a prosecutor, Alex Cooper, just like her, a hell on heels, and wrote five books while she still ran the sex crime unit. She left the DA's office in 2002 and became a full-time prolific novelist. Her latest, Deadfall, is her 19th in the Alex Cooper series. Keep in mind, in 1977, I prosecuted, my first high-profile case was a dentist sexually abusing a patient in the oh, chair. We horned in on Fairstein Susan and her Wright's partners in crime, Harlan Coben, Nelson DeMille, and Susan Isaacs at their monthly dinner, a support group of sorts, 
where successful mystery writers get together and talk shop. I'm a lazy researcher. My research is calling Linda and saying, Linda. Lately, but not, even, not just about legal stuff now. I'm calling her about like airplane repairs. You know, she's an expert. She'll do the research for me. Do you all reach into your personal lives for your characters? A lot of times I don't want to admit it, but a lot of the heroes are me with wish fulfillment. You know, <laughs> might be better at this or better at that, but they're usually me in some in some form. But as I've gotten older, I realize so is the villains, so are the bad guys, so is everybody. Oh, really? Lindas here. get younger. I don't understand. This. <laughs> yeah, Linda's always y Linda's younger always and young blonder, and right? <laughs> is your guy bald? Yeah, no, he's got a full head of hair. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about the wish fulfillment part. I want to ask how you get one book out every year. Linda, why do you do it? Well, I think because so many of the people I read and respect and like, I want those characters back. I want that voice back. And people who come to read your books, they want to see your characters back too. They might go somewhere else if they don't get them in a timely fashion. So this is your oasis, and it's beautiful. It's really an oasis. It's, uh... She spends her summers here on Martha's Vineyard, as does her character, Alex Cooper. This is Fairstein's writing cottage, detached from everything and everyone. So what, you, you commute. Have my coffee, I commute down the hill. I commute down you the hill. You come to work. And I come to my office. Oh, like, look at this. This is wonderful. Your main character, Alexandra Cooper. Is she you? <laughs> well, there was a time when I started writing 19 books ago that we were closer. Um, I certainly did the you right what you do. Oh, and age-wise, yes. I've said many times she's younger, thinner, blonder than I am. She's been in 19 books, almost a book a year, and um, she's only aged three years. So that would be a nice trick, right? <laughs> three years and 19 years? Yes. <laughs> she's always reading about crimes. So these are your newspaper clippings. These are clippings. And fills pages of notebooks and sticks on post-its with her brainstorms that are often as dark and grisly as the rapes and murders she used to prosecute. So we've had shootings, uh, strangling, suffocation, defenestration, going out the window. Poison? Yes, I've done poison, I've done a drowning. She always sets her crimes in a New York City landmark, like Grand Central Station, the American Museum of Natural History, Central Park. I thought it would be more interesting for the reader to be in a book where they learn something about a place. And for me, the other half is it, it keeps me very interested. Each book is new. It takes me to a new place to learn something I didn't know before. Psychorama. She's already researching her next book. And hard to believe, she has started a new series, this one for young readers 8 to 12, about a Nancy Drew-like young detective, Devlin Quick. And that'll come out once a year as well. You are a full-time writer now. Yes. You're living your dream. Yes, yes. And it, it came true. I pinched myself. It's a dream to, to have a career that I wanted all my life. 